Rumors. This album was made in 1977, and I remember I was at Hot Topic one day, and I begged my mom for this shirt, which is the same picture from the album. I do own two other Fleetwood Mac shirts, just so you know. Ah, cool. So, some of you guys might not know what the band Fleetwood Mac is. Um, they were founded in 1967. Uh, they've had two albums inducted into the Grammy Hall of Fame, including this one, the White Album, or that's what the fans call it. It's called Fleetwood Mac, but Fleetwood Mac already called it an album Fleetwood Mac, which was their first album. Um, they originated over in the UK, so they have British roots, but they've since been more so known in America due to their influences by Stevie Nicks and Lindsey Buckingham when they joined the band. Um, they've had multiple genres over the years. They actually started as a blues um, fusion band with other various folk and um, kind of country aspects. But I've also stumbled into psychedelic, um, some more punk stuff, and of course with everyone else's solo stuff that's a wide variety of genres. Speaking of wide variety, they've had a variety of members. From what I gather, I counted 18 different members throughout their time ever since 1967 to this year. Many have come and gone, but the five that are the most notable are these. Over here on the left is Lindsey Buckingham, who is from America, who at the time of this picture was dating Stevie Nicks, who you might know from her solo career, making songs such as Edge of Seventeen. Uh, this is Mick Fleetwood, who is the drummer of the band, who has been the drummer ever since the fifth band was formed and is probably the one of the longest running members. Besides this guy right here, John McBee, who has been the bassist for all at that same time. And this is Christine McVie, who joined, I believe, in the third album? The Glass House, I think that's what it's called? These five are kind of what made Fleetwood Mac have their identity. For a while, the first seven, eight-ish albums, they didn't really have anything uniform until these two over here came into the band and collaborated on their 10th album, the White Album, which I mentioned earlier. So Rumors is kind of their biggest album, but before Rumors, they've had some titles known to them. As I said, they struggled a lot with identity, but one of their biggest hits was a song called Albatross, which was made in 1968 and is an instrumental piece. It hit the UK's top like, song in January of 1969, um, giving them kind of their stones in what music is today. Before Rumors, they are having, they've had 10 albums, Rumors being their 11th. Um, they found their best members on that 10th album being the White Album, but this is where the bad habits started to form when Lindsay and Stevie joined. Rumors was a very, very struggled process to do. The White Album was so popular that they were pressured by a bunch of critics and directors to make something even greater. Stevie and Lindsay broke up, John McVie and Christine McVie divorced, and just various different interlooping dramas were in this band at this time. I could go on for days about how much just tension there was during the process of this album. There were also a lot of drugs, a lot of drugs. I mean, John McVie, no, Mick Fleetwood, the drummer, has said in 2019 that he counted eight ounces a day for 20 years, thus making a seven mile line of cocaine that he's done in his entire life. He even has a nose in his set thumb from how much cocaine he's done. The whole environment while they were working on the album too was awful. They were all just at each other's throats. They respect each other as musicians, but not as people. They hated each other's guts and they had to work in this room. And of course, there were so many affairs. Stevie Nicks was, um, dating Don Henley at one point and then Sly Stone. I actually wrote one of the most famous songs, Dreams, in Sly Stone's bed. I think she was with Lindsay at the time, I don't know. But if it wasn't for all this tension and all this drama and all these drugs, this album would not have gotten the praise that it has even today. The song list consists of 11, 12-ish different songs because Silver Springs was only in the deluxe edition of the album released a few years later. All of these songs have some sort of hidden meaning to them. I won't go over all of them because that's a whole speech in itself. 
But for example, Secondhand News was written by Stevie, sung by Lindsay, talking about kind of Lindsay and Stevie's breakup and how you don't really want to see the next person in the morning, that secondhand, the hour hand. Um, Dreams, of course, being their most successful song of all time. It reached the Billboard Hot 100 in 1977, uh, right around when the album actually first released and it sold one million single copies over its run of being out. Um, another good song to bring up is Go Your Own Way, which is actually written by Lindsey Buckingham, um, talking about Stevie and Lindsay's affair and how it's been affecting them. And having them all kind of sing these songs that are jabs at each other on stage is also weird, but surprisingly powerful. Because yes, they hate each other at this point, but they're beautiful with it. Um, another good song to point up is Gold Dust Woman. Not because it has anything like dramatic or anything, but it is about cocaine. Um, and cocaine is funny. Like I said, I could go about all these songs. Like The Chain is just about how they were like trying to get back with each other. You Make Loving Fun is about John McVie's divorce. And so many different things in this album. Moving on though, After Rumors. The album did so well. It sold, it has sold since February 2023, 40 million copies, um, making it the fifth best album from the 1970s and the ninth best selling album of all time. Um, most of the members, if not all of them, have gotten clean of their drug abuse. Stevie Nicks being the most notable example, in 1986, she was convinced to break her habit of cocaine. Unfortunately, then she got addicted on Valium and other medications to help her with her issue, but has since claimed sobriety, which is great for her because it almost ruined her career. They've since created also seven more albums, and their last album was made in 2003, which is also when the White Album was inducted into the Grammy Hall of Fame. And the reason why the White Album was inducted is kind of weird is because one of their songs on the album, Don't Stop, was Bill Clinton's campaign song. So that just made it more popular for some reason, and yeah. They lasted until 2022, and they only break up, broke up because my favorite singer of the group, Christine McVie, passed away, which is pretty sad for me personally, but I think it is about time that they start settling down with their own lives. But overall, one of the most influential bands in music history, and if you don't know much of their songs, then I highly recommend checking them out, because I really love them. Thank you all. You're my sources.